This poem is called uh, Live Nudes. I watch my Florida friend rake a free hand through his buzzed off hair, face full of sunset, as he tells me about a titty bar named Loveland. Call him Jim. Jim stocks paint for Home Depot. Went to Stetson College on a baseball scholarship. The dashboard glow greens a surf of horizon pink and Jim's face between sips from a Starbucks cup. I love those discoveries men make about themselves not meaning to. Cat calls of self-knowledge ripped from smoke so thick it slices with a swizzle stick. They may hear themselves become Sonny Corleone in The Godfather, calling women broads or worse, and forgetting that respect isn't only about knowing which new stranger's name to loose while sighing behind dark-lensed Ray-Bans. Don't get me wrong, I savor the idea of dioramas of long-hair tossing showgirls with veteran hearts, women who could care less why some men want to nuzzle a dream. Pole proficient beauties, still I say no thanks. Jim nods, says it figures, and you're lost, my friend. He tells me in the glow of the dashboard LEDs that the women at Loveland are thrilled to death to be doing what they're doing, naked and soaring across the stage in a state of entrepreneurial bliss, glimpsing a clock or plotting their children's future. But riding like this in his Cadillac, by a restaurant where neon sails bloom, Jim confesses that nothing is more fleeting than the pirate smile of a pole dancer. Says he slipped an Andy Jackson into a G-string to see Rapunzel L. V trophy legs under a sun and moon ball of mirrors, spinning the straw of self into gold. He doesn't say it like that, but that's what he means.